Hello, Roswell teachers. What's going on? Let's get excited. My name is Matt Arend. I am with uh, BoardWorks Education, and I'm here today to give you uh, your first look for many at BoardWorks, which has been purchased for you by the great staff at Roswell. We want to make sure that you understand how to get the most out of this new resource that is simply meant to support you as a teacher in Roswell. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen with you. Hopefully you can follow along just for a little bit and then we will get you uh, into the resource itself. So welcome to your introduction and just overall little user training for BoardWorks education. As I mentioned, my name is Matt Aaron. I'm the uh, New Mexico representative for BoardWorks. You have my email address there on the screen and I will be sure to follow up and send this PowerPoint out to you afterwards so you have access to all of the contact information available. Just a little bit about myself before I entered this consultant role with BoardWorks as proof of my picture right there. I was a principal for uh, 10 years here in the North Texas area, leading elementary school teachers and students uh, since transitioned and now love to uh, lead and serve educators in this new way as a consultant here with BoardWorks. One other important in person you will want to uh, familiarize yourself with is this handsome young man. His name is Andy Flo. He is our BoardWorks tech support expert. Should you ever stumble upon something you cannot figure out on your own, please feel free to uh, reach out to either him at that email address and phone number or myself, and either of us will be happy to support you on your journey. Now, before we begin looking into BoardWorks, I just want to start by providing you with just a little overview of what it is we do and what we provide you uh, through BoardWorks. So BoardWorks is an online supplemental resource, and that means that we are not a curriculum. We are not going to be your main go-to for curriculum. Roswell has that for you. We're meant to serve as a supplement to give you some optionality when it comes to providing engaging interactive lessons trying to make the good lessons you have access to absolutely great when it comes to maximizing your technology and engaging your students at the highest of levels. So we provide you supplemental content, kindergarten through 12th grade. It's aligned to the standards in New Mexico. It covers 18 of your core content areas. There's a 19th English grammar and skills toolkit. And altogether, that provides each of you 25,000 ready-made interactive turnkey slides that you can use to support students, provide intervention, extension as it's needed. It is shared across every learning management system. It can be sent to every single type of student device. So Chromebook, iPad, tablet, MacBook, desktop. Teachers, you, you can put this in your newsletter and share it with mom and dad. It works on their cell phone. So multiply the ways that you can interact with your students and your parents. And our goal is simple, y'all. It's meant to empower you so that you can engage students at the highest of levels, improve that learning outcome, student comprehension across any learning environment, whether that be hybrid or in-person or virtual learning. We can help you support all of those different learning environments. Because it's simple. We wanna support you, y'all. We support the instruction that you provide because we know that when you're doing a great job and you feel like you have the resources you need, you get to engage students at new levels. And when students are engaged at the highest level, that's gonna enhance that learning for them. And simply put, we wanna keep you teaching, right? Like what a novel idea, allow teachers to do the job they're supposed to be doing, which is teach, focus on the instruction. All right, so just a little bit of granular details here. BoardWorks is an online platform, okay? We work and it's an interactive platform that works on any student device. So take advantage of those one-to-one -one devices in your classroom, maximize the use of that interactive touch screen you have at the front of the class. All of our presentations run on HTML5, which simply means this, if that's not familiar to you, we're gonna work with anything connected to the internet, all right? Internet, Wi-Fi signal, if you have it, we will maximize that for you. That next link, that is our website. That's the app that you'll run online to access all of our content. If you haven't already accessed your account, 
please do so. Make sure that you're able to set up your email and your password, single sign on with Google if that's helpful. We want to make sure each of you has an account set up. If you have not been able to access your account, please, you can let me know. You can send me an email. You can send Andy an email. Let your administrator know. We want to be sure you have everything you need to kick off the school year and be successful. So a few things we're going to jump into today. First and foremost, how to navigate this new resource that we call BoardWorks. Second, how do you share lessons with students and making sure you put that into the learning management system you guys use. Third, you are able to customize and personalize any of the lessons and we'll talk a little bit more and show you how to do that. And then we'll just talk about ways that you can fully use BoardWorks. The best part for y'all is that every single staff member, teacher across the entire district of Roswell gets access to this platform. And the good news is that Roswell has secured this. It's a one-time purchase and a lifetime license. Through a small annual fee, we're going to make sure you always have the latest and most updated version of BoardWorks. You have every single content area, regardless of what you teach. So that's K through 12 content all subject areas. Just imagine how that lessens the burden you guys see face when it comes to providing that differentiated experience. When you log in, if you do not see a total of 19 different content areas, 18 content areas, a 19th English grammar and skills toolkit, please let me know. Contact Andy, let your supervisor know. We want to make sure you get access to everything you're supposed to have. And before we jump in, lastly, just thank you. Like you just overcame the, the most difficult year, you've had some rest, and now you are ramped up, you're ready to go for the 21-22 school year, which we know is going to require a lot of hard work and effort, and we hope that BoardWorks just helps you attack the year and allows you to be the best successful teacher you can be because we know that your success is going to stem into the success of the students that you serve. So let me transition my screen. I'm going to X out of this. I'm going to bring up our website. Let me stop share and just reshare so you can see everything that we are going to discuss here today. So this is our login page. Now it's important to just understand a couple of things here. So as a teacher, you're going to log in with your email address and a password, single sign on with Google if that makes life easier for you. Very easy to do. You'll notice when we toggle over to the student tab, there's a, it's a change. We do not use student emails. We do not have student passwords. Nothing you need to keep up with. We are student data free. Students access all of the BoardWorks content through a presentation code or a link that you share with them through learning management system. You could write it on the board. You could text it to them in a remind app. You get access to board. If they get access to BoardWorks through you. Now it's important to understand with the absence of the student data, We've chosen to stay in the lane of really providing you access to ready-made content. So it's an instructional resource for teachers. That's what we do really, really well. But it's also important to understand what we don't do. So what we don't do is capture student assessment data. We're not an assessment machine. You already have access to a lot of different assessment resources in your district. So how you will leverage BoardWorks is once you've identified the student strength of the student need, you can come to BoardWorks and with our 25,000 resources, you can find exactly what that student needs and be able to help him or her achieve their goals. So upon logging in, you are going to get access to what I've been, been mentioning, K through 12 content, 18 content areas, an English grammar and skills toolkit, all together over 25,000 ready-made slides that you can use to support your students with instruction. Now, upon logging in, the next thing you're going to do is choose the content area that you want to deliver instruction in. So I'm just going to click in the middle of the screen. High school algebra one is a starting place. Now, if you're a middle school teacher or an elementary teacher, or you don't even teach algebra one, hang in there with me because the basic layout is the same for all instructional content areas. So if you know how to navigate this screen, you know how to navigate everything. When you log in, you're going to see a collection of lessons on the right hand side. It's alphabetized by the title of the lesson. You can scroll through and see everything that we have available in that entire academic area. You can also search by standard, which is over here on the left hand side. Each of these blue ribbons represents a larger kind of unit of study within that content area you've selected. So you can click on it. You can also unpack 
each of those units of study and drill down to its most basic form. And that's where you will find the standard that the lessons represent. So in this case, this one standard in Algebra 1 is supported by four different lesson types that we offer. Now, isn't that fantastic? Because now as a teacher, you have a go-to resource that gives you some optionality when it comes to meeting a variety of different student needs. Because we know students need to see things in a variety of ways. They need to see it more than once. And now you've got, in this case, four different examples you can share with students to ensure that every single student's needs can be met. Now, with each of our lessons, you'll notice a few buttons. So let's talk about those briefly before getting into the lesson. The first is the play button. Your, your classrooms, your schools have interactive displays, some type of projection device for you to hit play and present content. That's what the play button is for. You could also hit play if you wanted to share this via Zoom or Teams or Google Meets or whatever your uh, tool may be. The next icon here, there's two of them. We, we share this out to any learning management system, as we've mentioned. So a live lesson allows you as the teacher to do the driving. And once we get in, I'll share a little bit more about that. But ultimately, it allows you to control the slide that students are on, what they see, and when they see it. And the second option is to share a student session, which allows the students the opportunity to navigate the content at their own rate and pace and speed, absent from the control of the teacher. And then the last icon that you see here is a save feature, which allows you to build up your own personal library of BoardWorks content where you can go in and begin to customize, personalize, and add additional content resources to what we already offer. So we'll share a little bit more about that as well. Right. Now, I hate that I'm not there live with you because you may already have questions. So please feel free to email me any questions that you have. I want to make sure we do our best to answer any and all questions that you may have. Now, as a lesson opens up, you can use the thumbnails, which is the button down here in the lower left hand corner. And it's going to look like PowerPoint or Google Slides. You can navigate through the content, starting with the very first slide and use it all from beginning to end because there's a very sound pedagogy and sequence to our lessons. Or you may choose to use the simple lessons and slides that you want to use. Maybe there's five or six in here that you want to use to make your good lesson great. That's okay as well. In this case, there's 32 slides of content for you to choose from. Now, at the beginning of our lessons, we give you kind of an information slide. Think of it as like a table of contents of what you're getting get yourself into. We have icons throughout all of our lessons that cue you in as a teacher to what's going to be available in the upcoming lesson. So this first one just tells you there's some mathematical skills that we're going to be working on. Perhaps it's one of these eight mathematical skills that we'll focus on in that lesson. There's also a modeling stamp that allows you to know that there's going to be some things that we can work through together on this slide where you're able to model what you expect for the students. Always have the opportunity with this icon to do some group work or have a large group discussion. Does not mean you have to use it that way, but it allows you to leverage that resource should you choose to do so. Now, these last two here in the bottom, I really want to draw your attention to. So if you have not been listening to me, now's the time. This icon with the red stars, that means that the slide that you are on is going to have a level of interactivity to it. That's interactive for you as the teacher and for the students. So please take advantage of that. And then lastly, this little icon here indicates there are teacher notes. So we embed teacher notes into our content because we know that not every single one of you is a content expert in the field yet. Maybe you're a first year teacher. Maybe you're a substitute teacher. Maybe you're in a content area you're not as comfortable or familiar with. Those teacher notes will help you raise your level of understanding, allowing for consistent levels of instruction throughout that building throughout your district. Now let's jump into a few of the slides and take a look around and focus on just how easy it is to navigate and use for you as a teacher. Now we can see already that there's a little notes section up here. So I'm gonna look at those notes here in a minute, the little notes icon, but I wanna walk through just how easy BoardWorks is to use. So everything happens on the click of my mouse as the teacher. So if this is that live lesson, as I click my mouse, content is not only appearing on my interactive panel, but it's also popping up on my students display at the same time. So you really are able to stay connected to the students throughout that learning process, ask the questions that you need to be asking at those high levels and make sure that students understand what you just introduced before moving forward. Now, as we get to with this red stars an interactive slide, 
I want to show my students everything this slide has to offer. So I'm going to unveil my sticky notes. I'm going to highlight the circles and cue in those missing numbers. And now as I'm being super transparent with my students, check out what I can do. You as a teacher are able to interact with this content, creating an endless number of examples at your fingertips, right? Far beyond what the math book may provide, far beyond the five or six you, you may have prepared the night before coming into this lesson. You're able to respond to individual student needs, create opportunities that are going to challenge or simply hit refresh and use it as an opportunity to show again for the second time what a student may have missed the first time around completely up to you how you take advantage of this resource. But I love that I can cover up aspects of the equation and present a challenge for my students. And now on their individual devices, every student in my class can do what I was just doing, manipulate, investigate, explore, and try to determine, hey, what are the missing numbers in this, in this equation that my teacher covered up? And then now it frees you up to move about the room and provide that feedback to students, engage with your students, and not be locked to the computer screen waiting for the assessment number to pop up on your screen to let you know how students did. Now I've mentioned the teacher notes. So the sticky note down here at the bottom will give you access to those, allows you to have that inside knowledge of the curriculum to ensure that you're delivering the, the content in an accurate way at a high level. And we'll build in suggestions as well that help you, help you take advantage of the interactivity of BoardWorks. And those are available across all 25,000 of our content area or slides and 18 of our content areas. Now, as I move through, you continue to see visual examples of how the content is going to support not only your students, but lessen the burden that you face when it comes to differentiating instruction, because you can manipulate and change the slope of the line at a simple click of the button. I mean, imagine for your students now how that helps their level of understanding being able to see this equation change immediately as they move up and down that y-intercept. Now, at any time, if you see these red stars, which indicate interactivity, I can hit the question mark. And that's going to remind me as a user or the teacher how to take advantage of that interactivity. Each of these is specific to the, to the interactivity on each of our slides. You also have an embedded calculator in some of our content that students can easily use if they need to and then simply hide when it's not appropriate to have. As I progress through, if there's any of our content that you would not want students to see, you can hide it. They would never know that it's there. But it brings us to one of the several embedded kind of common formatives or quick checks that we embed that allow you as the teacher instant knowledge on whether or not your students understand what you just reviewed. So that green line that gives me feedback as a student and cues you in as a teacher that students are on the right track. A red line would let me know that I did something wrong and I need to correct my mistake. I can randomize it and try it again. As a teacher, you can score it and share those correct answers, making sure that students understand what's expected before moving forward. Now, I'll share just a few more slides as we simply kind of click through the thumbnails here, giving you an inside peek before we change uh, content areas. But if I was going to use this slide, for example, Every single student is able to answer these questions independently on their own. And when they hit refresh, you're able to refresh that screen and you're given six more examples for the students to solve. But when it's time for you as the teacher to say, hey, boys and girls, we've had enough time on slide 22, everyone now has jumped to slide 23 and can take advantage of the embedded tools that we offer, or they can investigate further with multiple slopes of a line on this one graph. All right, I know you're intrigued now, so just imagine that level of interactivity across all of our math lessons, K through 12. I can't show you all of it. I just have to let you dig in on your own just a little bit further. But as I transition subject areas, let me just show you a little bit more about the ways that we can share board works to our students through that learning management system. So I'm going to click on either the the live lesson or the student session, either one does not matter. If I want to share this to Google Classroom, I'm going to simply click on that button. It's going to cue me into a few prompts, prompts without leaving BoardWorks to make this an announcement, make it a classroom. This link is going to populate. Of course, at any time, you can change any of this text and customize it to what you need your students to see. Okay. And when it's ready, I'm going to hit post. 
that allows me to have my lesson available to my students. And all my students would then do is click on this direct link that opens up on their personal devices. And now they are ready to follow along with the lesson or work independently, depending upon how you set that up. If you're using any other type of learning management system, you're going to hit the copy button. You're going to open up your teacher portal on Schoology or Canvas or Seesaw, and you're going to paste the text. You're going to post the text and the students do the same thing. I hope that you find that's very easy to do and it eliminates any unnecessary steps for your students to now access the content that you want them to take advantage of. Now, I'm going to show you just a few more examples of some of our science content at the elementary level, and then we'll talk about how we can personalize that content, allowing you to take advantage of the flexibility of our resource. The visual nature of the graphics are fantastic. Now, we get asked a lot of times, hey, there's no sound on this. Why, why, why can't my students hear anything? That's by design, teachers. We want your voice to be included in the instructional process. Students don't wanna hear from me. Students don't wanna hear a robotic voice either. They wanna hear the teacher voice. So you would use this and you would pause it. You would ask questions along the way. You would check and make sure that students are using the embedded vocabulary that you want them to be using as a part of that student dialogue. You'd be asking those higher level questions you've prepared in advance. If you want students to hear your voice and work on this independently, we have a lot of partners that will use a screen recording device, similar to what I'm doing right now, where the students can hear my voice, but still take advantage of the rich graphics and nature of the content that we provide. You'll find throughout all of our resources that the visual graphics are gonna support any student's understanding of the vocabulary content, while still giving them the opportunity to easily review concepts by resetting the animated clips and watching them again or being able to respond to open-ended questions that you provide as you customize and, and make the content more flexible for them. Throughout all of our science content, you will find virtual labs that allow your learners to dig into the scientific process, going through that process without having to have all the materials, which sometimes we fall short of. So it maximizes your instructional time. And if you wanna watch it again, all you need to do is hit refresh before moving forward. So again, you'll find the thumbnails helpful as you move through the content, allowing students to participate in the uh, in the learning or having them work independently on their own, putting the cycle in its appropriate spaces before they getting the feedback that they did the right work. Or you can perhaps use it as a quick check and have the students solve it and then take a screenshot and upload that picture to your learning management system for you to get that feedback. You know, at the end here, we got a little true false, which here in a minute, I'll show you, I love to use as a pre-assessment. And you may be wondering, well, how do you do that? It's the very last slide. You can change the order of any of our content. So let's talk about how we do that. Back on our slides, you'll notice that there is a computer disk or a save button available. I'm simply going to click that. Now, as a user, every single one of you is able to save these lessons to your personal library. Now, once they're saved in your library, you come up here to the top left, you click home, you click on my library, and you'll be taken to the lessons that you have added to your library. Nobody else, so just yours. Now, the benefit here is that you're gonna use this edit button. And now this is the science lesson we just reviewed. So the true false questions that I had here at the end, I'm just gonna move those up here to the front because I want students to do that first. And I'm not ready for them to see anything else in this lesson yet, so I can hide everything else so the pre-assessment is the only thing they're gonna be able to see. And then I can go back in later and unhide some content or share some versions of the same thing to different students based upon what that pre-assessment told me. But the benefit is that you can also create a slider, add your own content. So if you have a YouTube clip you want students to preview, drop it in there, it embeds immediately. You can drop in a picture. So if you want students to have some dialogue around an image or you, you found something that supports a student's understanding, put that picture in there. I'm going to remind you that I was a school principal. But I know you're using Kahoot and you're using Flipgrid and you're using a lot of other online resources already at your disposal. You can type those in, you can drop images in of the logos and you can hyperlink any of that. And now students have immediate access to all of those tools 
underneath one hood with boardworks. So any of the slides that you bring in are going to have a black ribbon at the top just to help you distinguish between what was pre-made and what you now you have made available. I can close that out. And now because you're a collaborative staff and you're a collaborative district, I'm going to go back to that lesson I just created and I'm going to save it one more time to a school-wide library. And when I do that, anybody on my campus, instructional aides, special education teachers, they can access the same lesson my gen ed class is doing. And they don't have to create a second version. They don't have to go in and create their own content. They can use that on grade level general education content. They can save it back to their own library from the school wide library. And they can continue to make customizations into it or use it just how it is. What a great resource. Now you guys can share together throughout that planning process. Now let's talk about this just for a minute and kind of give you an idea of how a, a created lesson with some embedded supports may look. Of course, you are way more creative than I, so uh, no making fun of the principal's level of creation here. However, I, I've used the, the kind of changing the order and I've moved that pre-assessment to the beginning. I've eliminated a few slides and then I embedded my Kahoot picture and I want students to click on the image to complete the Kahoot at the end of our lesson together today. But for others, I want them to not do the quiz and I want them to give me some feedback. I wanna hear their voice. So I want them to use that academic language for their science assessment. So I'm gonna hyperlink a flip grid picture and they're gonna share an observation from one of the labs we did today. Or perhaps for others, others I want to use a written form of feedback. So I'm gonna hyperlink a Google form and they're gonna type out their answers to me during that water lab and during that evaporation lab. So I know that they spent time doing what I needed them to do. For others, it might just be a good morning message. They're coming in the class and there's a warm up. But how about when you're gone? You've got a substitute teaching your lesson and I want students to hear my voice while I'm away. I'm gonna embed a YouTube clip of the lesson that students are gonna be following along with. And I'm simply gonna allow them to listen to my instruction while I'm gone and then give them the opportunity to work through the content while I'm away. Lots of embedded uses that I can use to ensure that students are still getting access to everything I want them to see, even though I'm not there with them. Hopefully, you tech savvy teachers love that. And those of you that don't consider yourself tech savvy can take advantage of the work your tech savvy colleagues are doing as they share to that school wide library. So I think that's a very important part that you guys need to talk through as a team of teachers, as a school to determine what's our best practice going to be when it comes to sharing those resources to a school wide library. Because ultimately, you can use this in a variety of ways, y'all. It can support your tier one instruction in that quick little whole group mini lesson. It can support your teacher table, small group instruction, blended learning, independent stations, tutoring before or after school, extension opportunities for students that need that. Special education teachers are now on the same page all of the time when it comes to what's taking place in the general education classroom and they can support that learning during that resource time or doing during that inclusion opportunity. And because of the one time purchase for a lifetime license teachers, how you choose to use this right away, I promise it will change in three or four or five months from now, you'll use it in a completely different way because it's that flexible of a resource. So I hope this deep dive today just gives you a better understanding of how to leverage BoardWorks, how you can use this as a tool, as a resource to support you in your instructional efforts, saving you time, not having to go to Google and Teachers Pay Teachers and Pinterest and all the other places you invest so many hours looking for supplemental content. The district has now provided it to you and for you. And I'm grateful that we're able to partner with Roswell Schools in supporting your efforts of growing your students one day at a time. Thank you so much. Please reach out with any questions y'all may have. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to connecting with you in person sooner than later. Have a wonderful day.